Good morning, BookTube, YouTube. This is Johnny. <clears throat> I thought I'd make a video. <clears throat> My throat is always dry. I think it's because we have the furnace on and the air gets dry and it gets in my throat <clears throat> so you gotta excuse me if i'm always coughing but i thought i'd make a video my wife is gone it's 10 33 in the morning here in west michigan it is january the 8th the year 2023 it's a sunday and as my habit is to read in the mornings, afternoons, <laughs> at night, but uh, and write in my diary. Uh, I can't find my my book marker, but so yeah, I get up in the mornings. This morning I got up at I don't know seven o'clock. My wife left for church around eight thirty because she has to set up for coffee before Sunday school. And I'm on page 87 in the year 2023. I started um, on January the 1st, it was page 1. And now on January the 8th, I'm on page 27. Uh, yeah, i just been writing. It's just what I do. Keep track of myself. So this morning, I wanted to talk about, I got a book in the mail. I mentioned I was, I was getting a book in the mail. I mentioned it in my last video. And this is the book that came in the mail. I had it. I've been waiting for this to come out when I heard about it from Reformation Heritage Books. Now, now all those who are into Reformed literature, pure, uh, Puritan reprints, historical Calvinism, Reformed Covenantal Theology, Dutch Theology, Dutch spirituality, 17th century English Puritanism, experimental exegetical preaching. Uh, always check out Reformation Heritage Books, which is located in Grand Rapids, Michigan. I've been buying books from them for many years before they became, they're really big now. When I st first started buying books from Reformation Heritage, they were just a small operation out of their seminary in Grand Rapids. They used to just have one room, <laughs> and that was like, oh, 35, at least 35 years ago. Now they have their own store there in Grand Rapids. They have a huge warehouse. They ship books all over the world. They publish books. They uh, have theological conferences. Uh, they have a seminary. It's become really huge. <laughs> I remember when it was just meeting in a, the seminary was just meeting in a house that had been uh, remodeled to have some students. Now they have a whole seminary building. They have a seminary library. They built housing. It's become really huge over the years. And they uh, <clears throat> start publishing Appeared in reprints. And one of the things they, Reformation Heritage, published that really excited me, and that's what I'm going to make this video about. Many, many years ago, <clears throat> well, the book I got in the mail was this book. First of all, The Labors in Godly Learned Divine William Perkins, including previously unpublished sermons by Matthew and Payne and J. Stephen Hula. I got this in the mail and I was really excited about this because I'll share in a minute why. So I was reading this this morning. It has unpublished sermons. And so this morning I was reading an unpublished sermon that William Perkins preached. Now William Perkins lived from 1558 until 1602. And he is considered the father of English Puritanism, of 17th century English Puritanism. He's a really important figure in the 
development and history of 17th century English Puritanism. So I was reading this morning his sermon that's unpublished, but now it's published. So God, God, so God loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, John 3.16. But I wanted to mention how I first heard about William Perkins. And I was, many years ago, I first got into English Puritanism, as I've mentioned over the years in my videos, when I was living in California in the Bay Area, and I was living in Richmond, California, in, which is near Berkeley, across the Bay of San Francisco, Oakland, uh, Marin County, you know, Stinson Beach, places like that. But I lived in Richmond, California, in San Pablo, California, which is near Berkeley, Alameda, Oakland. I was born in Oakland, California in 1952, but I lived all over the country. But I consider myself a West Coast, California, San Francisco Bay Area. That's where I consider my, my roots, my hometown. But when I got into English Puritanism, I was working on staff at the Richmond Rescue Mission. I was living on Skid Row, uh, uh, evangelizing homeless people, people off the streets, uh, prostitutes, alcoholics, homeless, deranged, crazy people. And but I've always been a bookworm. And then I, as I mentioned, I was reading a commentary on A.W. Pink on the Epistle to the Hebrews, and he quoted the Puritans, when he was going through the Epistle of Hebrews, which is in the New Testament. And I start looking for those writers, and I went to, if you go to Berkeley, California, even though it's Babylon today, they, they have old seminaries, there are seminaries there, and they have libraries, and back then, Going on uh, 45 years ago, I would go to the Berkeley and I would go to the, these seminaries, which are now pagan temples. They had libraries and they had the old Puritan works. <laughs> you, and uh, I, was, I, I would go there on my weekends when I wasn't working or on staff, my days off, and I would read the old writers from the 17th century English appeared in re uh, the actual books, the old leather bound, smelling old print. And then, uh, but one of the books I bought was this one, Introductions to Puritan Theology, A Reader. And I bought this when I was getting into the Puritans. This came out in, this is a Baker Bookhouse and this came out in 1976, and I became a, uh, a lover of the old writers. I came into the Reformed faith, Calvinism, the, the doctrines of sovereign free grace in 1975 through reading A.W. Pink, and then I got into C.H. Spurgeon, and then I got into Dr. Lloyd-Jones, and then I joined the Orthodox Presbyterian Church there in Berkeley, California, and uh, but one of the books that introduced me to Puritan theology was this one, and its uh, editor is Edward Henson, and forwarded by James A. Packer. And in this this introduction, I was reading it, and there is in here. Chapter 7, Salvation, Introduction, and there is a picture of, of William Perkins, 1558 to 1602. And in here, introduction, is what is famous, is called the Golden Chain, which is a diagram setting forth predestination, the decrees of election and reprobation. And this is the golden chain, which was 
set forth by William Perkins, who was a theologian. <laughs> and he, uh, it says here, quoting from this book, Perkins' golden chain is a basic guide to Puritan theology and preaching. Though not every Puritan preacher agreed with each detail of Perkins' chain, it does represent Reformed doctrine as generally interpreted by Puritans. His analysis and organization of soteriology, which is the doctrine of salvation, is amazing, especially in relating to the, the work of Christ to the elect believer. Perkins considered faith the result of God's effectual call rather than sinful man's free will. He also considered true repentance to result from sanctification and to lead to complete obedience. It goes on. So when I read that, there was no... You, the only way you could find William Perkins' works was to find a 17th century edition which was very rare and very expensive. Mm -hmm. And the Ban of Truth did publish a little paperback on the Puritan, Puritans on his prophes uh, The Art of Prophesying, which was William Perkins' book on preaching, his, his way of homiletics, how do you preach. Okay, I could go on all day, but I want you to tell you that one of the things that the ba that Beaky did in his the Reformation Heritage books, they reprinted the works of William Perkins. <laughs> they reprinted them, which I was so excited about. It's twelve. Uh, it's twelve volumes. No. Uh, Volumes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 volumes of the works of William Perkins. And when I found out that they were going to reprint them, which has not been done <laughs> for... Now they did, somebody did reprint his sermons on Hebrews 12 and his commentary on Galatians a special small publisher did many years ago, which I have down the lower level. But his complete works, these are the works of William Perkins. Now in the works of William Perkins, you have uh, volume one is exegetical works, digest of harmony of the Old and New Testaments, in volume one, combat between Christ and the devil, Matthew 4, Verses 1 through 11, Sermon on the Mount, which are uh, Matthew 5 through 7. But then, in volume 2, commentary in Galatians, volume 3, commentary in Hebrews 11, volume 4, exposition of Jude, exposition of Revelations 1 through 3. But then in volume 6 is the golden chain is in here. And I was so excited to, to be able to actually read all about the Golden Chain, the whole complete theological treatise on the Golden Chain, which is in here, which I was really excited to... Uh, I don't know how you fold this thing. And how you fold it. Let's see how they go. Maybe it goes like this. No. So I got the golden chain. It's not right. I don't, I don't know how it goes. So when they publish the golden chain, that's how it goes. Anyway. In volume six of the works of William Perkins is the Golden Chain, which is completely the whole theological treatise. Uh, chapter one uh, of the body and scripture and theology. 
The body of Scripture is a doctrinal is doctrine sufficient to live well. It comprehends many holy sciences thereof. One is principal, others are handmaidens or retainers. The principal science is theology. Theology is the science of living blessedly forever. What is theology according to William Perkins? Theology is the science of living blessedly forever. Blessed life arises from the knowledge of God. And then he quotes from John 17, 3, the Gospel of John. This is life eternal, that they know thee to the only, only very God and whom thou hast sent, Jesus Christ. And then he quotes from Isaiah 53, verse 11. By his knowledge shall my righteous servant, Christ, justify many. And therefore it arises likewise from knowledge of ourselves, because we know God by looking into ourselves. Theology has two parts, first of God and second of his works. So then, chapter 2 of the golden chain of God and the nature of God. And then he goes, as you go through here, he goes through like, uh, that's chapter 2, chapter 3 of the life of God, and then chapter 4, they're very small chapters, of God's glory and blessedness, chapter 5, concerning the persons of the Godhead, uh, chapter 6, of the works of God and His decree, chapter 7, of predestination and creation, chapter 8, of angels, chapter 9, of man and the estate of innocency, chapter chapter 9, of man and his innocency, chapter 10, of sin and the fall of angels, chapter 11, of man's fall and disobedience. So he goes through, briefly, theology, systematic theology. But notice how he says that. He says, what is theology? He says, theology is, going back here, Theology is theology is the science of living blessedly forever. Blessed life arises from the knowledge of God. But then, in here in volume six, you have the golden chain. He uh, there, it opens up with it's called. I want to give you the full title of the golden chain. A golden chain or description of theology containing the order of the causes of salvation and damnation according to God's word, a view thereof is to be seen in the table's annex, written in Latin by William Perkins and translated by another. Now this was first published in 1591 in Cambridge, the University of Cambridge. Uh, then it has a join, here too is a join the order which Theodore Beza, who was the successor of John Calvin, in comforting afflicted consciences. So this is, a, I was really excited when I knew that the Reformation Heritage Books was going to translate the works of William Perkins. Because I read about him way back in 1976, and I looked at, oh, it would be so nice to have to read The Golden Chain by William Perkins, because it wasn't available. Uh, and so now I, I can read The Golden Chain, and I can read the works of William Perkins. And I keep these in my study. That's what I'm trying to say. I mention, now sometimes when I make videos, and I write online in my online diary, you can't present your whole self and what and what you are as a Christian. And you can be misinterpreted or misunderstood. And when I mention the collected works of St. John of the Cross, I'm not a Roman Catholic. I am, first of all, I go by the Bible. But I am a child of the Reformation. I, I love John Calvin. I love William Perkins. I've shown you that one of the books that my most favorite book 
is Looking Into Jesus by Isaac Ambrose, who was a 17th century English Puritan. Uh, this morning I've been reading Puritan Theology, Puritan Reformed Theology, Historical, Exer Experimental, and Practical Studies for the Whole Word of Life by Joel R. Beakey. And I was reading here, there is, um, I think there is, well, he goes into, uh, Calvin as experimental preacher and things like that. And I thought, I thought, so I was, I, so the point is, I'm not a Roman Catholic. I don't agree with everything in St. John of the Cross. I don't believe in his view of, of the Catholic Mass. I don't believe in purgatory. I, I don't believe that we're saved by works. I believe that once we accept Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we are declared righteous and justified, that we don't have to strive for some kind of perfectionism. I believe that because of my faith in Christ, I've been saved and that I will, when I die, I will go home. I will go to heaven to be with the Lord Jesus Christ. I won't go to purgatory. Uh, I believe the assurance of salvation, that, the Holy, that once you are saved and that you are regenerate, that you are united to Christ and that you have a new life and that you are uh, accepted in Christ and and when you talk about the life of prayer I go to when I pray I go to the Lord Jesus Christ he is my great high priest I go to the throne of grace and I know that my prayers are heard because I'm in Christ and Christ indwells me by his spirit and so sometimes people would think oh he because they read St. John of the Cross the ascent, the ascent of the ascent of Mount Carmel in the dark night, that he's Roman Catholic. No, I mean I read these things because I'm a student of church history. I read the Puritans, I read the Church Fathers, I read the medieval writers, I read uh, 19th century theology, the the old Princetons, B. B. Warfield, Charles Hodge. I read. Uh, Dabney, the great Southern Presbyterian theologian of the 19th century. I read A.W. Pink. I read Spurgeon, the great English evangelical preacher. And I read all kinds of books. I read New Testament theology, Old Testament theology, commentaries. It just goes on and on. So, you, But I read St. John the Cross because I find him, I just find him interesting and also he's, he speaks to me but not in every single way. If I was to choose a person that really speaks to me um, above everything else, it would be what I always say is the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. I mean, I go by the Bible. I go through the, I've been reading the Bible for 53 years. Read the Psalms, the Old Testament Psalms. Now, when I, because I have the Bible and I have, I've been reading the Bible for so many years and the Word of God indwells me and, the Holy, and I pray every day for the Holy Spirit to enlighten and illuminate my mind that when I read anything, William Perkins, St. John of the Cross, uh, I read Isaac Ambrose, this is another book by Isaac Ambrose, The Christian Warrior Wrestling with Sin, Satan, the World and the Flesh. Isaac Ambrose lived from 1592 to 1664. When I read Beaky, I'm always reading everything through the light of Holy Scripture. That's why you have the Bible, to give you an interpretive filter. 
you read the Bible, you meditate upon it, you you ask the Holy Spirit to live in obedience to the Word of God, to live in the footsteps of Christ, and you study the Bible, you read the Bible, you meditate it, you sit under the preaching of the Bible, the teaching of the Bible, and then you, when you read anything, the Church of St. Augustine, or St. Thomas Aquinas, or St. John the Cross, with Jonathan Edwards, or B.B. Warfield, or C.H. Spurgeon, or D.A. Carson, or John Piper, you read and you listen, but you... Everything you... Is this scriptural? Is this biblical? Because the Bible says that in the last days, there will be false teachers and false prophets. As there was in the Old Testament, see, in the New Testament, that there will be, in the last days, false teachers. Uh, it says there in 2 Peter chapter 2, but there were, were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you, who will secretly bring destructive heresies, even denying the Lord who bought them, and bring on themselves swift destruction. And many will follow their destructive ways, because of whom the way of truth will be blasphemed. So it says there, the Apostle Peter says, But there were also, but there were also false prophets among the people, even as there will be false teachers among you. So how do you know who is the true teacher or the false teacher? By studying and reading the Bible. And sitting under men who love the Bible, who believe in the authority of Scripture, that believe that this is the Word of God, inerrancy, infallible Word of God. So, I want to make that plain. Now, if I was to choose anybody to read besides the Bible, read William Perkins, read Isaac Ambrose, read Joel R. Beakey's books, Read, uh, read like I've been reading this morning, my wife and I, for devotions, I said, read the Christian's great interest, William Gunter. Are you born again? Are you a Christian? Are you a disciple of Christ, a lover of God's holy word? Or are you following heresies, demonic doctrines? <laughs> so we have, but how are you going to know? By reading God's Word, Old Testament, New Testament, daily, read it, hear it, hear it preach, taught, read godly writers. William Perkins loved the Word of God. Dr. Beakey loves the Word of God. Isaac Ambrose loved the Word of God. Uh, Herman Bavick loved the Word of God, the great Dutch theologian who I have in my study. So I just want to make that plain that that I, I am a student. I'm a, I went to Bible college. I have a Master's of Divinity in Church History. I have a Bachelor's in Christian Education and Christian Missions. And I am a student of Church History. I'm a student of Theology, Reformed Theology, and Mystical Theology. But... True knowledge of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is found only in the Bible. And, the, and God uses the Bible to reveal Himself to us, to make us know who He is. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the great work of salvation accomplished on the cross. So I just want to say that. But, go out and buy the works of William Perkins. You can't go wrong. They're on sale right now by Reformation Heritage Books. Read The Golden Chain. Read Isaac Ambrose. Check out, you want a good introduction to Peer and Theology, a reader by Edward Hinson, editor. Also, I just showed you this book, another book I bought when I first got introduced to the Puritans, The Genius of Puritanism by Peter Lewis. Uh, it has the Puritan in the pulpit. It has the Puritan in private 